Welcome to another screencast. This one is related to the half-life of carbon-14. With respect to the Earth Science Reference Table and Geologic History. So why is it called carbon-14? Why not just carbon? You may remember from seventh grade that the number of protons tells you the element that you have. Carbon has six protons and most carbon has six protons and six neutrons which would then be called carbon-12. Uh, carbon-14 is different in that the 14 refers to the atomic mass. So carbon-14 still has six protons, but it doesn't have six neutrons. Instead, it has six protons and eight neutrons, which are also known as jimmies, as in jimmy neutron. Blast from the past for you, possibly? Maybe not. So <clears throat> it's an isotope of carbon-12. It's unstable. It can't remain that way, and it decays from carbon-14 into nitrogen-14 at a very predictable rate, um, and half of it decays to carbon-nitrogen, uh, carbon-14, half of it decays to nitrogen-14 every 5,700 years. The isotopes, baseball team on The Simpsons, perhaps you know that, perhaps not. It's not affected by temperature. It's not affected by the environment or the starting amount. That comes up quite often. Don't be fooled by that idea, that thought. So if we take a look at 100 grams of carbon-14, that's our starting amount. Well, if we take a look at the reference table, page 1, and we can circle that, radioactive decay. And if you take a look at carbon-14, highlight it, and you can see carbon-14 degrades into nitrogen-14. So carbon-14 is the unstable, and then nitrogen-14 is the stable every 5.7 times 10 to the third years, which is 5,700 years. So, <clears throat> simply stated, it means half of carbon-14 will decay into nitrogen-14 every 5,700 years. Or, another way to say it is, every 5,700 years, half of carbon-14 decays into nitrogen-14. But only half of it does it. So, you're probably like, wow, this is so much fun, which it is. And if we take a look at our example here, 100 grams of carbon in, will decay into 50 grams of carbon-14 and 50 grams of nitrogen-14. So the law of conservation of energy still maintains. Energy you know, matter cannot be created or destroyed. You still have the same 100 gram mass you started with. It just decayed into different materials. This happens after 5,700 years, after one half-life. 100 grams of carbon-14 will, de will decay into 50 grams of carbon-14, 50 grams of nitrogen-14. After two half-lives, which would be 5,700 plus 5,700 years, we would get, which of course would be 11,400 years, our 100 grams of carbon-14 would actually be 25 grams of carbon-14 and 75 grams of nitrogen-14. After three half-lives, we'd have 12.5 grams of carbon-14 and 87.5 grams of nitrogen-14. So that would be after three half-lives. So one half-life would take 5,700 years to complete, two half-lives would take 11,400 years to complete, and three half-lives would take 17,100 years to complete. So if we look at it from a graphical standpoint, <clears throat> our 100 grams would be an entire white box, and green would represent nitrogen-14, uh, the white box representing carbon-14, which is the unstable atom. After one half-life, half of the carbon-14 would be converted into nitrogen-14, and the remaining half, after another half-life, half of that would be converted, and then the remaining half of that would be converted. So graphically, you can see the change. So you could do it in numbers, or you could do it graphically, and of course, there's another option. We could do it in percentages. So we have 100% of carbon-14. After one half-life, we have 50% carbon-14 left. After another half-life, we only have 25% of carbon-14 left. And after another half-life, we would only have 12.5% 12 12 carbon-14 left over. So these are the various ways in which you can visualize this to understand the concept of half-lives. And just remember that carbon-14 is unstable. Nitrogen-14 would be the stable product that it decays into. So we have some questions. These are in your um, packet. In your note packet somewhere. I don't want to say the page because we may use this year to year. Um, you could see this one is question number five. If a sample contains 50 grams of carbon-14 and 50 grams of nitrogen-14, how many lives has it undergone? 
Well, again, matter cannot be created or destroyed, so we know our starting product was 100 grams. Had to be. So we could go back to this idea that we just did, and we could kind of work through it by saying, okay, well, we started with 100 grams of carbon-14. After one half-life, I'd have 50 grams of carbon-14, 50 grams of nitrogen-14. I could stop right there. How many half-lives? That's right, just one. Question six on the same worksheet, or fun sheet as you guys probably call them. If a sample contains 25 grams of carbon-14 and 75 grams of nitrogen-14, how many half-lives has it undergone? Well, you might have committed this page to memory, which would be quite impressive or really lame. I can't really decide which one. Um, then you would do the worksheet that you can kind of go through. All right, well, after one half-life, I have 50 grams of carbon-14, 50 grams of nitrogen-14. Am I there yet? No. So I go another half-life. I wind up with 25 grams of carbon-14 and 75 grams of nitrogen-14. And I arrived at my answer, and I could see that the answer would be two half-lives have gone by. One more question, perhaps? If a sample contains 25 grams of carbon-14 and 175 grams of nitrogen-14, how many half-lives has it undergone? Well, what's my starting product? How much do I start with? I would start with 200 grams of carbon-14 and 0 grams of nitrogen-14. And I would look after one half-life, I'd have 100 grams of carbon-14, 100 grams of nitrogen-14. I go another half-life, I get 50 grams of carbon-14, 150 grams of nitrogen. Not there yet. Another 5,700 years, I get 25 grams of carbon-14, 175 grams of nitrogen-14. And lo and behold, I know that my answer would be three half-lives for that one. You're always better off just writing out diagrams. They never ask you beyond five half-lives. Typically, it's three to four half-lives, so you could very easily diagram this stuff out rather than trying to figure it out mathematically. So to give you a percentage one, and skipping to nine, what percent of carbon-14 is left after five half-lives? So very unusual for them to go to five. We put it on the fun sheet just to be silly goose egg-ish. So here we go. We set up our chart, say, well, here's my start. Here's one half-life, two half-lives, three half-lives, four half-lives, and of course five comes next. Now, if I take a look at it, if I diagram it out, after one half-life, I'd have 50%. After two half-lives, I'd have 25%. This is all carbon-14 percentage, what I have left of carbon-14. After three half-lives, 12.5%. Simply just dividing it by two, taking a half of each percentage after each half-life, I get 6.25%. And then finally, half of 6.25 is 3.125%, easy for me to say. So that's what we would wind up with after five half-lives of carbon-14. Just remember, carbon-14 has its limits. You'll read a whole bunch of different things about the accuracy, um, anywhere from 40,000 to 70,000. I, I, sometimes you'll hear 100,000, but generally the accepted value is about, it's good for about 40 to 50,000 uh, 50, years of aging something. And it used to have to be alive in order to date it accurately at carbon-14. Um, so when you look at the Earth Science Reference Table, you're only going to be looking at the most recent items that could be used, carbon-14 could be used for. You could see after five half-lives is such an infinitesimally small amount um, that would be very, very difficult to detect it, never mind get accurate measurements and therefore get an accurate age. So it is very, it's limited to about 40 to 50,000 years. So in terms of the Earth Science Reference Table for carbon-14 dating, you're really looking at the Holocene epoch, which is under the Quaternary period that it would actually be useful for. You're certainly not going to use it for anything in the, in the Devonian age or anything like that. So you made it through another screencast, and here's your actual reward. Yep, just pretend like nothing happened. That's pretty outstanding.